Hello, I'm Random Sauce, this time with mic audio. <laughs> Yo, and I'm Jake Hawk still. <laughs> and yeah, I'm gonna be running Paper Mario 64, any percent. Um, so we're basically gonna be skipping as much of the game as possible in this category. And yeah, we think uh, we'll probably beat the game in around an hour and 50 minutes, or probably less. <laughs> and yeah, it should be fun. All right, let's get to it. All right. All right, I'm just going to delete a file here. Yeah, we've got plenty of time to talk about the run as it yeah. starts. So. <laughs> and we'll start the timer in three, two, one, go. All right, All right, so Paper Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the first thing that you might notice is that we're playing on Japanese. And uh, there's a few reasons for that. I mean, one of the main reasons is that the, um, the text scrolls faster on the Japanese version. And there's also some Japanese exclusive glitches, which uh, we'll probably talk about later. Yep, can call those out as they happen. And so yeah, this is just the start of the game. It's it's prologue. It's a it's a little slow pace for the first like twenty minutes or so. There's still a couple glitches that we're gonna do. Um, but yeah, this is this is any percent. We will skip as much of the game as possible. Basically, there's some pretty cool glitches involved. We're just on our way yeah, to the so castle. So for anyone... Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so for anyone uh, unaware, yeah, uh, Paper Mario has kind of a long intro. It takes a little bit for things to really get going. Uh, prologue is like around 20 minutes, uh, but we get some really important stuff along the way. And so you'll notice, uh, like movement-wise, uh, the fastest way to move around, the base way to move around the game is to spin with Z. And you'll notice he's like jumping at the end of those spins, and that cancels a little bit of the end lag. Uh, you kind of like slow down before being able to move again uh, if you don't do that. Yeah, like at the end there, I just didn't jump out, and it's like slower. And so the, the movement is pretty fun in this game, honestly. Uh, I really like the spinning. And um, later in the game, we'll be getting a badge called Speedy Spin, which makes the spin go a lot faster and further. So the, the movement is, is fun in this game. Yeah, deceptively difficult, actually. I'd say it has a, like a higher skill ceiling than you'd probably expect. Absolutely, definitely. That was like a surprising thing when I came into this game. It's like how much the movement actually like matters. Yeah, it honestly is one of the bigger things that makes a difference between being like a mid to top level runner, I'd say. Yeah. When I was starting out in this game, I was always uh, I was always comparing myself, like my my gameplay, to to other top runs, and I could see how much time I was losing from movement. So, <laughs> fairly it's a good way to improve, was, though. Yeah, so fairly early on, I was putting a good focus on, on movement, as well as obviously the glitches. So this fight is really uh, scripted. We can only jump on him. Yeah, they, they really ease you into the battle mechanics uh, with the first <laughs> few fights in this game. True. Only let you do a little bit more than the previous time every time. <laughs> Uh, one little minor tech thing to notice, whenever uh, Random does go to jump, uh, he's going to be mashing A, and uh, it's it's kind of hard to tell if you don't know what to compare it to, but Mario does, goes into this little crouch animation, and if you mash A there, you can uh, skip out of it and skip up to, I believe it's 10 frames uh, for every jump, which uh, and you can continue doing that through the whole run, so that adds up a bit as time goes on. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, that's a cool little, like, small thing. There's a lot of things in this game that seem like they're just made for, like, speedrunning type yeah. things. <laughs> like, a lot of cool, like, tech. You died. No. <laughs> oh, no. I'd like to point out that Mario actually dies here. Like, straight up dies. Mario or Bowser wins, except for the Star Spirits. <laughs> for that intro screen thing, you can like mash start and A. <laughs> Cause like both of those buttons clear clear it, so if you want to like save frames or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Some mo most uh, screens that you can clear like that, it is start and A, but some others are randomly like A and B. You want to mash? It's weird. Yeah. Uh, did we talk about text? Uh, yeah. So I mentioned the uh, like hey. how Japanese text scrolls faster. Uh, yeah, the way to advance, the fastest way to advance text in this game is to just hold the B button, which compared to uh, yes. a lot of other games with texts, with text, it is very nice. No I, button mashing in this game. Or, I honestly take it for granted. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's such a luxury to be honest. It's it's such a good thing that they put that in the game where you can just hold B and it'll scroll the text fast. Yeah, and it's faster than trying to mash it, so you're only losing time if you don't hold B. Yeah. It should be in every game. Alright, almost to the part of the game where we actually get to play a little bit here. Yep, almost uh, get to move around. Just gotta go over here, talk to uh, Goompa, see what's going on. Try and leave the village. So in this part of the game, uh, the first like boss that we come up against is Junior Troopa, this little like egg-looking boss guy. We'll see, and we're actually going to skip him. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you want to explain um, loading zone storage. And all that. Yeah, I can. I can do that. Uh, so yeah, this is the first big trick of the game coming up. We've got you know a bunch. Start the game off with a little bit of easy movement, <clears throat> and then we go right into like 13 or so frame perfect jumps. You know, a little bit of a difficulty spike. Uh, but basically, the way this works is whenever you go into a loading zone in this game, Mario won't take that loading zone until he has been on the ground for two consecutive frames. Um, and so we can take advantage of that by doing uh, jumping into the loading zone and then doing frame perfect jumps uh, to wherever we want to go. Uh, this game runs at 30 FPS. And so what Random is going to do is he is going to jump into the loading zone uh, and then jump all the way over to the bush that contains the hammer. And you get the hammer as soon as you interact with the bush, but then the loading zone that he's stored, since he'll have been on the, the ground uh, for two frames, will take him and take him past the trigger for the junior fight. And so that's what he is going to do right now. Okay, next up. <laughs> it's okay, it's a hard trick. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Man, you kind of get the idea of uh, what's going on here, probably. Alright. There we go. I've been skipped. I'm going to go back for some coins. Yeah, you can see he has the hammer. When he goes back here, the junior fight will not trigger. So this, this uh, 
after some routing and stuff saves a bit over a minute. Yeah, the routing is a big thing in this game as well. So like, since we skip that fight with Junior Troopa, then like normally we get 20 XP, like experience or whatever. So yeah, we have to change the route to be able to make up some, some XP. Yeah, so later on we'll actually be going out of our- Random will be going out of his way to uh, fight an extra enemy so that we can get a level uh, earlier than we would otherwise. Yeah, so like right off the bat, I think Junior Skip saves like a minute or so, and then like we lose time later by making up the XP, but still saves a bunch of time. Yeah, still overall a very big net uh, time save. Right, and this is going to be the first partner uh, that we obtained in the game, Goombario, and Badge, Power Jump, yeah, which we'll be using immediately. Um, Goombario is not the most useful partner, but he, you know, he gets in a couple hits here in the beginning. True. It's better than not having him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we got Goombario, I'm going to equip Power Jump. So I can heal some FP. Yep, that's a Goom Nut, just a 3 FP heal item. And he mentioned uh, Speedy Spin earlier, so he's going to be getting some coins along the way. Uh, we need to get 50 coins uh, by the time that we need that. So. Yeah, all the coins I'm getting is all just for the gold, getting speedy spin. So for this fight, we want to kill both of these enemies at the same time, because it, it skips like a, an extra like cutscene kind of, like text box thing. If you kill like one first, then the, then the other one will have like a cutscene, like crying about the one, the one dying. Yeah. <laughs> so it's faster to have one of them attack twice than to listen to that text box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send them off crying. And so Random's gonna eat that Goom Nut now. You could alternatively go back and hit the Heart Block, um, but it's a bit faster to uh, get and eat the Goom Nut there. There's a Heart Block in the previous room. Yeah. There's actually a glitch in this room that lets you refight this boss, the Goomba King. Yes. <laughs> I think for a little while that was thought to be like optimal for for any percent because of just because of routing and stuff. It actually skips a cutscene as well, but in the end I don't think it's faster because doing like refighting Goomba King itself is slow. So, thankfully, because it's a hard trick, and it would not be fun to be resetting to that trick. Yeah, was it was it made obsolete with the newest route, or was it just... I think so, yeah. Because okay. it used to be like... I think it was like three seconds faster than the old route, but now with our new route, with um, leveling up next left, it's, it's much more than that. So that's good. Okay. Because I know the task did that. Right. But of course, I mean the task is a whole lot of yeah, things. yeah. <laughs> yeah I wonder task being yeah, task, task being tool assisted speed running speed run for anyone who doesn't know, where it was just like made to be basically the perfect speed run. In an emulator. Yeah, that's that's a good watch as well. You can see what really is possible when you have a computer like doing all the perfect inputs. It's, it's pretty wild. Yeah, do we want to talk about, and we got like a cutscene coming up here, do we want to talk about like what any, this category, the future of this category? Yeah, I think <laughs> now's a good like. time to, to talk about it, yeah. 
and, and you're a good person to talk about it. <laughs> All right, I can do that. Yeah, so this is any percent, but the name of this category, role and like category leaderboard discussions are still going on, so nothing's finalized yet. But there is actually a way to beat this game in under an hour now. Um, yeah, just recently, uh, Rain, Rain Shoes, uh, found a way to do uh, ACE, Arbitrary Code Execution, uh, as a human. You may have heard about uh, the whole stop and swap run that starts with Ocarina of Time. And before, that was the only way to pull off ACE in this game. But now, we don't need that anymore. It's not quite as fast, uh, but yeah, we can now, uh, and th this is not what we'll be doing in this run. Uh, but we can now go all the way to uh, the volcano and then pull off like a really precise setup to uh, kind of execute Mario's coordinates as code and then the file names as code and warp straight to the credits. So we'll be figuring that out, but... Uh... Yeah, it's kind of like the ultimate glitch where you're able to like change the code in the game and yeah. do basically whatever you want with it. Yeah, the credit swarp is just like one example of what you can do. With Ace, you can if you can think of it, you can pretty much do it. Yeah. So it's pretty incredible that that has been discovered in this game. And yeah, just very recently, very recently, like what a couple yeah, less than ago, a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, we were able to do it without Ocarina of Time, which that was a funny thing in itself. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that I have to specify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the last run that you guys watched was Ocarina of Time. We used to have a... <laughs> we have a thing where... Well, you can explain that as well, actually, the stop and swap. Yeah, yeah I can explain that, too. Yeah, so uh, that was the oldest, fastest way to beat the game with, I guess, only first-party hardware. We didn't consider it, like, we, we had a vote and everything. We didn't consider it to be actual any percent, because, you know, starting your speedrun with an entirely different game... Yeah. I mean, you can think of a bunch of different reasons why that probably shouldn't be the end of percent run. But yeah. Still, it was a really cool thing where you would start off uh, in Ocarina of Time and do a uh, an SRM setup. I, I don't want to get too much into the details there, but basically yeah. do a thing to put a piece of code on the expansion pack and then quickly swap games and do... Uh, actually, Random mentioned refighting Guma King. It's, uh, part of that glitch helps you trigger it to be able to then execute the code you left on the expansion pack. Um. Yeah, it's pretty wild stuff. And uh, originally, I was actually uh, thinking about or planning on doing the new Ace um, Any% percent for this run, but I decided it was a little too difficult for a marathon setting. Yeah, only having a couple weeks to prepare that. <laughs> and yeah, it was so new. It was literally like it had just been discovered, basically. Yeah, I think I'm still the only one to pull it off. Right. I think so, yeah. Not that other people can't do it, just... Other people yeah, yeah. Yet. So yeah, instead we'll be showing um, the any percent run where we're gonna go to Chapter 8 and beat Bowser as fast as possible. Yeah, not quite the way you probably played it as a kid, but a lot more recognizable than just yeah. crashing the game <laughs> in the volcano, resetting it, and you're at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this cutscene here, we're uh, getting the action commands. The, the lucky star is an item that gives us the action commands. So before, like when I was just uh, jumping on enemies, that's all there was to it. But now, uh, if we time an A press, it will uh, do extra damage. And there's other action commands as well. And I mean, for the final Bowser fight, I have to hit like all the blocks. I don't, the action commands are very important. <laughs> Yeah, we could skip getting them. Uh, there's no nothing that like says we have to, but mm -hmm. routing-wise, it is very much worth the uh, the time to come over here and get extra commands. Yeah, there's a glitch that if we want to, we could skip this whole cutscene and everything. Um, we could just go right off to chapter one. But yeah, the action commands are just too valuable.
You get to see him in action right here. In English, that would say nice. <laughs> Alright, Random is also doing... Uh, so this Magic Koopa has 8 HP, and it would be a little bit faster um, for this fight specifically if he would have just done 2 power jumps. Uh, but instead, he is saving some FP for uh, the next fight that he's going to be doing. So he needs 3 FP for that, so overall it's faster. Yeah, exactly. So coming up is next. Okay. Yeah, uh, coming up is a glitch uh, called Black Toad Skip, where we're gonna skip like a really long cutscene where we talk to Merlin in the the house and everything. Yeah, if you've never seen an out of bounds glitch in this game. That kind of happens. <laughs> All right. Cool. So yeah, I, I use that toad <laughs> to like push myself out of bounds, and I don't know how to explain the rest of it. Like we we fall out of bounds to, into like the 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 post office, and then just like precisely jump around the scene to land behind the toads. Yeah, so the way that falling in this game works is if you fall for long enough, you actually end up uh, gaining mo like upward momentum and shoot back up into the air. And so you can use that to uh, like fall, off, fall out of bounds and then pop up somewhere else, like if you come up underneath the ground. And so Random did a setup there to kind of like jump around a few different out of bounds spots to just like pop up uh, behind the black toads, which otherwise would have told him uh, he couldn't go through. Yeah, that whole mechanic of, um, like, flying up in the air after falling out of bounds is very useful for us speedrunners. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the most useful mechanics in the entire game. <laughs> yeah, so like when they made the game, I guess they didn't expect anyone to get out of bounds, and I think that was probably just a, um, like a debugging, like troubleshooting thing they added in. Probably. To help out. Yeah. But it helps a lot for some glitches. <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, the other day I was kind of like just at, uh, looking at all of them together, trying to figure out how many of them use that mechanic, and it's like 40-some percent of the glitches in this game. <laughs> it's wow. a pretty big amount. So I actually saved before this, because if I were to mess up the this fuzzy minigame, then... <laughs> That would be really bad, but uh, yeah. this game is just um, RNG where the shell is. And it's actually faster on Japanese as well compared to English for some reason. I think they, yeah, I they think made it like the third round, but... right? Just the last one, yeah. They made it like easier because the English release is like released after. Yeah, that's why there are some, like, Japanese-exclusive glitches um, that we'll talk about when we get there. But since the English version came out later, they had time to uh, fix a couple things that they found wrong with the Japanese yeah. version that we can take advantage of. It's only really a handful of things that they that they patched, that, like, glitches that were found, I guess. Yeah, honestly, nothing huge. Yeah. I mean, I guess <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I guess item duplication but mm -hmm. is kind of huge, but also not really. <laughs> it plays less of a role than you might think. Yeah. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Alright, so that's the fuzzy fight. I'm gonna grab a badge here, HP+. plus. Um, and this is just for purposes of being, like, safe, for for the safe route. That, that's another thing to discuss, is, like, um, normally, if you want to go as fast as possible in this category, we do very risky things in the... In very the, risky. <laughs> because 
since we're skipping so much of the game, we're very, very underleveled for these final bosses. So, like, it's it's hard to beat the final bosses when you only have, like, 10 HP and, and you've only leveled up, like, <laughs> what, twice, I think? Yeah, we go into Chapter 8 at level 2, and I think we finish at level 4. Or at least the risky, riskier routes do. I don't know what this route does as, as well. Yeah. So we're heading into chapter one right now, but I will not be completing chapter one. <laughs> I'm really just coming into chapter one to get um, a partner, Bombette, and for an important badge, and then I'm going to leave. <laughs> yeah, so really just running around getting the stuff that uh, we need. Instead of trying to, like, progress in the game, I guess. Yeah. Which is going to be kind of a running theme for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> kind of making our way through here um this badge power bounce i i never know if i should consider going in the way we do to get it a glitch or not like it it just looks kind of weird and there is the bombable wall over there like it, you know it kind of like stops you from moving until it lets you through i believe the way i got it there i think that is intended <laughs> um this is a glitch <laughs> We should. Oh, right. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're just kind of flying through this, but that's. Yeah, you know. Oh, I actually. Oh, I have to back this up. Back up. Yeah, this is staircase skip. And, uh, I mean, I'll let you explain it if you want. Okay. Yeah. So the staircase there, uh, the wall below it doesn't extend the whole way up. And so what Random did there is he kind of just like jumped off the stairs, but then held up to go around the wall. And then you can hold down again to go and like kind of land on that out of bounds area below that you're never supposed to be able to get to uh, with the stairs still up. And so from there, he was able to just jump uh, and like land in beh behind the door um, that leads to this area. Yeah, we got to like respawn uh, upstairs, like on the top floor. Yep. And yeah, it skips a bunch. Yeah, he should have come out the top door right next to the trap block that he just hit, but because this area is uh, scripted, like with the cutscene, it still spits you out uh, down below. Now we've got Bombay. So there's a, a little like mini fight thing that I have to do here, and then we're gonna leave chapter one. Yeah, we have everything we came here for already. See, so I can just take him out quickly with a fire flower and a body slam. get a few more coins yeah so now I've got 43 coins just to f I just need 50 for speedy spin So normally at this part of the game, uh, you can't advance past like chapter one without beating chapter one because there's like, um, I guess like south of Toad Town, there's these logs that are blocking our way from getting past there. 
And we are gonna find a way to to get past them. With a glitch we call log skip. <laughs> it gets past the logs. Who would have would have thunk it? <laughs> it's a good name for it. <laughs> Yeah, and this is actually a different application of loading zone storage that we talked about earlier. Uh, this one isn't going to involve jumping a bunch of times, but uh, another thing about loading zones to know is that they extend upward infinitely, and so you can store a loading zone by just going above it. Um, and so what Random is going to do here is he's going to do a similar thing like what he did with the Toad to get out of bounds, where he'll just have him kind of push him and he'll hammer to make it so that he is pushable through it, whenever you're hammering uh you can be pushed by npcs to ignore collision and then what he's gonna do is he is going to fall here and he, whenever he pops back up into the air he's going to go over the loading zone and store it and then if you're in the air for long enough the game just respawns you back in the starting position and there, there you go nice try <laughs> or nice first try <laughs> yeah it was good yeah, it's a, a it's a tough trick to, like sometimes <laughs> It is, yeah, it definitely is. And yeah, so what he was able to do is he was able to store the loading zone, and then he respawned back where he fell, but he was only there for a frame so that he could fall again to the left and land uh, really far away, perpendicular from the loading zone. And uh, whenever you do that, the game actually stores like kind of how perpendicular you are to a loading zone when you go through it. Normally it's just so that you know it's a nice little visual thing, you're kind of like walking a little bit from that direction. But by using loading zone storage, you're so skewed past there that you just start the next room already out of bounds and fall. So you can use that to get around the walls. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool application of that like out of bounds um, like mechanics. It's like it's cool that we have multiple ways of doing loading zone storage in some scenarios like this. Yeah, very versatile trick. Yeah. Let's see, now <laughs> we're in chapter two. And spoiler we alert, we will not be beating chapter two either. <laughs> what? Next you're going to tell me we won't be beating chapters three and four either. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So the things we need from chapter two, we're gonna get Pear Carry, this this partner right here. Uh, so I have to get the retrieve the letters for Pear Carry, and we're also going to grab some Waka Bumps, which are like really good items. They heal 25 HP and 25 FP. Yeah, kind there's of also a crazy a, item for chapter two. There's also a glitch right here. Perfect. That's nice. called rock climb. Yeah, and he made that look easier than uh, <laughs> made that look easier than it is. Yeah, that saves like eight seconds, I think. Uh, if you if you pair it with the next glitch that we're gonna do, and yeah, these are like not the easiest glitches, no, but they're very they're very cool. They're very like satisfying. And another thing we're going to get from Chapter 2 is we're going to level up. And so this was like a recent, uh, a recent like change to the route, is that we used to level up in a different area, but now uh, we found that it was fastest to level up on a, a cleft right in this room here. So we first strike with Bombette, like so. And just the two quick bombs there. Makes it okay. a really fast fight. Gotta get ready for early seed. Yeah, and I'll let you kind of focus on doing that, because this is another uh, pretty difficult trick. Uh, and you see, already has 50 points. Nice. Uh, but so there is actually a gap in the collision here. A really tiny gap. Uh, but what Random is going to do is he is going to use the N64 controller's function to reset, remap his neutral. And so, he's, yeah, yeah, there he goes, already doing it. <laughs> Making it look easy. 
Uh, so he, he basically just kind of wedged himself into that corner using the remapping function to give him a really consistent angle. And then he spun to give him uh, just the extra little bit of speed he needs to get through. And then he was able to fall down into uh, an out-of-bounds gap, jump around some more collision, and uh, get the seat. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty cool glitch. It's a pretty incre it's like it's kind of incredible that that was found. It's like um, it took many years of like searching for some way to get the seed early. And yeah, and it also used to be used to be a lot harder than it is now. Yeah, it was true. A much more difficult setup. It's still difficult, but nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Yeah. And we are lucky that the N64 controllers actually have a built-in feature where you can remap your neutral like that. Um, that wouldn't be possible if we couldn't do that, because it's very precise. Yeah. Or at least just much more hard, much more difficult. Yeah, it'd be really hard. Yeah, yeah it, that it, was... it would be possible. <laughs> but... Yeah, I've seen people get a couple people get it before, but... Yeah, yeah, so we got got everything we need from chapter two. Now we're we're going back to Toad Town. Yeah, gonna get speedy spin. I am calling multi bounce speedy spin first strike. <laughs> yes, we have a three out of four chance that uh, speedy spin will be there at the bad shop. So let's see. If I'm lucky or not. Yeah, hopefully it's their first try. If not, it takes like 25-ish seconds to uh, go two screens away to reset the bad shot and come back. So, And after this is going to be the... Alright. One of the biggest glitches in the game. Oh, oh, yep. Blue house skip. Getting right. Okay, so first try is uh, speed spin. That's good. Uh, and so now... Uh, this house, it has an angled wall, which kind of lets you stand on it uh, and jump on it. And you only have one frame because the other wall tries to push you away. But yeah, just like that, you can just do a frame perfect jump to uh, get uh, in through the ceiling, which uh, lets you pass through the top and use Bombette to blow up that wall. And yeah, we can go straight to the chapter five shortcut now. Exactly. Yeah, the, uh, so angled, angled walls in this game behave very similarly to floors in certain circumstances, like that. And, yeah, if it wasn't for the front wall of the house being flat, you actually could just jump on. It wouldn't even be a frame-perfect jump. That wall is what pushes the wall. But even with it, there's a one-frame window for it. So, yeah, that's one of the biggest tricks in the entire game. Yeah, it skips so much of the game. Blue house skip. Yeah, and so now Random is using Power Bounce on Blooper. And he is... So this is this badge lets you jump on the same enemy over and over again as long as you keep hitting the A button with good timing. Or until the game decides that you're done. <laughs> Which it can yeah. just randomly do. That was yeah. Good yeah, that was good. That was, good. Uh, that was fast. Yeah, the... The power bounce, the, the randomness with power bounce is a big thing for speedrunning this game as well. If you yes. are doing risky things, you really rely on getting good caps. <laughs> yeah, so if we say like, oh, we need a five cap here or something like that, that means we need the game to let us power bounce at least that many times. Oh, uh... <laughs> yeah, we're kind of just flying through this again. This is called Raft Skip, which is a, also a big, big glitch that lets us skip most of Chapter 5 and go right into the Volcano. Yep, so uh, basically you can use Paracarry there to, you know, he just kind of interacts with the really funky collision there and just pushes you uh, out of bounds, basically. And then from there, you're just running around jumping, uh, doing more out of bounds jumping to get to the Volcano. And as far as glitches go, vol the volcano is filled with glitches. Yes. <laughs> There's a bunch. <laughs> we'll get to. Okay, I got the early cycle. If 
I nice, messed good. up there, I'd lose like 15 seconds from this, this platform, like missing it. Yeah, there's I gotta a, wait for the platform to come back. There's a skip right here. Cool. Nice. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a good one. That's a a fun one to do. And then there's another one right here where we can skip doing this this puzzle right here. We can just jump around the collision here. And then there's another glitch right here. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, that was really good. Yeah, that's a really hard glitch. That one that I just did there. Yeah, and it, it doesn't save saves, that much time. So. Yeah, it only saves like <laughs> So if five you don't get seconds. it quickly. <laughs> so yeah, that was like rapid fire glitches there. Yeah, luckily I think those ones are pretty easy to follow what's going on. True, yeah. I'm gonna um, upgrade Paracarry here in the volcano. Yeah, this is another more recent routing change, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm basically the the early part of the run. I'm basically using like the most modern route, and then it's really just at the end where I'm doing like safe strats. Okay. So that is slow to to upgrade pair carry there, but it makes up time later on. Because we, we use paracarry a lot in a lot of these battles. And upgrading paracarry there, uh, it just lets us do extra damage with the, the shell shots. Yeah, there's a lot of routing stuff uh, that's like that, where it's like, you lose a little bit of time here, but you make it up and more later. Yeah. Um, one of the cool like tech things with movement is you can actually like store spins. And I, I always like to do it here, like, it's not a big time save or anything, but like, here while I'm waiting on the platform, I can spin, and then press Z, and then C down, and now I'm storing a spin. And then right when I first touch the ground, he will spin. I've never thought to do that there. <laughs> and we got a glitch like right that. here called Flare Carry, where we can skip a long cutscene there. Yep. It's My like, understand. Yeah, you okay. can explain. I, I think the way it works, I'm not 100% sure this is right, but I believe what. Oh, well, well then, real quick. <laughs> yeah, we got another glitch here. Yeah, this is a Lava Piranha Skip. Uh, boom, right there. Another, you know, stuff you've seen before. Use an NPC and hammering to get out of bounds. And that skipped the entire boss fight right there. Yeah, that's a really good skip. We're lucky that Colorado's just standing there in the perfect place so we can skip the whole boss <laughs> yeah if you if colorado wasn't there we i'm pretty sure yeah we would have to fight him yeah we'd have to fight <laughs> lava brana uh but what i was saying the, the previous glitch there i'm pretty sure the way that it works is that you basically get paracarry to take you above the loading zone that sticks out from the wall a little bit and so that you store it and then you land so it's sort of loading zone storage i think um, my, my understanding of it is like, um, like, I think Paracarry's hitbox is different when you're, when you're using Paracarry, and it's the same as, um, Lackaluster, which is a partner that we are going to get soon, but the same way that you can get, like, Clippy Mode, I think Paracarry does essentially the same thing, and you can kind of clip into walls slightly, and the, the loading zone is, like, close enough that you can, like, touch it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't think anyone's really looked into it too closely, so... Yeah. We just know it works. <laughs> just... Yeah, that's the important thing. <laughs> Use Paracarry here. Take Loading Zone. So yeah, so we got to the end of Chapter 5 pretty quick. And uh, we'll just be going through these uh, Peach cutscenes. Yeah, no way around these, unfortunately. Yeah. And there's like... There's like one more big glitch that kind of like defines this category in a way. 
don't know if we should explain it now. Yeah, you talking about Peach Wart? Yeah. Yeah, we can explain it now. Do you want me to yeah. or you got it? Uh, yeah, you can explain it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I hope you guys like the volcano, because we're going to be going back a couple times. Um, but, um, yeah, so basically what we now want to do, we want to beat chapters 6 and 7 so that the game will let us go to chapter 8. But we don't actually want to beat chapter 6 and 7 because that's slow. And so we're going to be doing a glitch called Peach Warp, where uh, with the next partner that we're going to be getting, um, which we'll be focusing on in a sec, uh, we can kind of clip back behind to the, like, past where Lava Prana is. Um, or where lava, to where Lava Prana is, which you're not supposed to be able to get to because there's lava blocking it. And so what that is going to do is kind of let the game say, like, hey... You just, it, it'll play like the end of chapter five uh, cutscene, but then the game will just be like, well, you beat the chapter you are currently in. <laughs> and under yeah. normal circumstances, that is chapter five. But uh, it is going to be six and seven. Exactly. So, yeah, like the goal right now is to get to chapter six and get the partner Lackluster, who is one of the most broken partners like the most glitchy partners in this game probably the Wait, most did you, glitchy. Mean that? did you mean that trick instead <laughs> i went off no no warp. no i i, I didn't okay peach warp because okay um yeah i feel like it's like a main part of of any percent because really when peach warp was first found it actually split the categories and they made another category just for like any percent no peach warp <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just because it made it made the the category so incredibly different, and in ways like more difficult. Yeah, a lot more. I mean, it's kind of evened out these days with more modern strats, but it yeah. uh, at the time made the run a lot more RNG dependent than it had been. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I'm actually going to go um, to the beach. <laughs> The beach repel gel. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. grab that for extra safety. Good to have. I originally wanted to try and uh, get it so that this route had like item duping, but it didn't like the items didn't work out that way. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's actually really limiting in any percent that we only have uh, ten item slots. We make do with it. But it would be uh, would definitely be beneficial if we could come in with more items. Yeah, for sure. We use every single one of those item slots. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you're uh, low level in this game, uh, it, it be they could yeah, they become less relevant later on if you get to a higher level. But at a low level, items are one of the best ways to. Uh, or they're just very good in general. Yeah. Healing, dealing damage, etc. So I guess in a way, like, so far in the run, our goal has kind of just been to get the magical seeds so that we can enter Chapter 6. Um, so that we can get our favorite partner, Black Lester. Yes. <laughs> so I'm getting the last seed right now, which is hidden in the forest. Yeah, I don't think we mentioned them yet, but uh, there's four magical seeds that you collect throughout the game uh, that you need to enter Chapter 6, and so Random has three of them. That's what Early Seed back in Chapter 2 was for, to get one of those. As well as, that's actually the only reason we need to beat Chapter 5. <laughs> yeah, I actually just kind of <laughs> remembered that fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get the seed from Colorado there. All right, but now yeah. he has all four and can plant them. And so immediately when we enter Chapter 6, we're going to do a glitch to get to, to Lackluster as fast as possible. And there's actually like three different methods of doing it. Um, I, two of the methods involve loading zone storage. Um, the one I'm going to be doing is uh, loading zone storage, like ju uh, jumping, like the frame perfect jumps. 
but yeah, like what you saw with junior skip yeah but there is an alternative method that looks similar kind of to log skip the way that we like clipped out of bounds and then like fell multiple times to store the loading zone but that is a lot harder to be honest um, <laughs> honestly it's very yeah. precise <laughs> Not like frame for jumps are any like easier, but in a way they are. It's certainly this is much, certainly much more straightforward. Yeah, and it's faster. <laughs> and it's faster. <laughs> but yeah, this is the same kind of deal with like uh, log skip. How you're trying to skew your angle to get out of bounds. That's the goal here, which you'll see yeah. him uh, attempt in a second. So yeah, usually in chapter six, it's really it's pretty late in the chapter where you can actually get uh, lackey. Okay, that was good. Oh. Let's go. Nice. So yeah, we, we skew our <laughs> angle far enough to land exactly on that bottom seam, and then we can like jump around and make it to the other side. When usually you need an item to like to like fly across the spikes, basically. Yeah, so that skips most of the entire chapter. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good skip. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that and then continue to beat the chapter normally because that skips getting everything you need to plant the beanstalk. But if your only goal is to get lackey, like ours is, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, so like this is the only category where we just immediately, when we enter, um, just immediately do early lackey. Also, I just remembered I need to equip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> would have been fine just would have been a little slow yeah Probably. yeah true yeah so now we fight lack of Lester. he's got 50 hp which is kind of a lot but it will not be a problem this is where uh that para carry upgrade is gonna come in and be handy deal a little extra damage every turn. So yeah, routing is a big part in this game. Like, this whole fight has to be, like specifically routed to be fast and efficient and we have to use our items all all wisely yep and then a little time saver there uh so random attack with paracarry first on this last turn uh because star storm is going to kill uh star storm is a pretty slow move so we only really use it when we have to uh but if we can Use it as a, a killing blow. You can overlap the enemy's dying animation with uh, the Skolar going away animation. So it makes yeah. it a little bit faster. Yeah, I think it saves like a few seconds. Like it's it's actually it's actually pretty noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we have Lackey. Yeah, the most busted partner in the entire game. For sure, there's a lot of very interesting glitches we can do with with Lackey. Yeah, the game so, is almost kind of balanced in a way by making yeah. us get him last. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, we just went into chapter six just for Lackey, and now we leave. And we are, in a way, going to be beating Chapter 6. In a way. In a way, by going not to Chapter 6. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, I'm going to get the Ultra Boots from the sewers, now that I have Lackey.
Yeah, luckily, just like with the Ultra Hammer, you can just go straight from normal hammer to, uh, or sorry, normal boots to Ultra Boots. Yeah. Some nifty movement to get around the spinies in there. Yeah, this area has, has good, interesting movement. Yeah, not All too right. difficult to get down, but pretty satisfying. Yeah. Can you grab this life from here? Nice. That Koopa can be really annoying sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, now we're heading back deep into the volcano. Yep, I'm gonna take the pulley that everyone I'm sure remembers uh, being built, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> that definitely happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily a lot of these things, a lot of things in this game, uh, as you progress through them, they kind of retroactively update. Uh, the game's right. like, oh, you're at this point in the story, so this must have already happened, even if you didn't actually see it happen. Yeah, exactly. Also, I want to know where all those spike balls come from. <laughs> That's true. There's so many of them. It's not just a one-time trap. I wasn't quite fast enough. <laughs> if you go really fast and like catch an early cycle, in a way, with the fire bars. So coming up really soon, this is Peach Warp. Yeah, this is uh, what I was explaining a little bit earlier. Yeah, so he's going to get into a really specific location here. And when you hop on Lackey, uh, it actually kind of offsets you a little bit. And if you do it in the right spot, you can use that to clip through walls. And so he's going to do that here. And then he's going to pop back up and be able to redirect his momentum down into the right into that loading zone. And now he's going to do a Lackey teleport. Uh, so if you hop on Lackey and then hop off and walk away, uh, Lackey kind of waits for a little bit. And then uh, if you jump on him at the right time, he's actually like zooming back to your location. And so you can use, you can hop on him while he's zooming to, uh, again, kind of clip through a wall. Yeah, the Lackey teleport is is uh, kind of a mysterious but like i don't think we fully understand it in a way it just kind of works in some areas um, like we depending... kind of understand it but also yeah. we don't really know the specifics of a lot of it right but i know we need double-sided collision so any walls that only have like one side you will not be able to like lackey teleport past all right and now it thinks we beat chapter six. <laughs> yeah, because we were in a chapter six state and we beat a chapter. <laughs> exactly. So, so it must have been chapter six that we beat, right? It's kind of like a wrong warp. Like some people think of it as a, as a wrong warp. It's like... It depends on your definition of wrong warp, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Random flexing on this dude by transforming right in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do all the yeah, fastest strats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a wrong warp. It's more of a right warp with the mm -hmm. wrong story sequence. I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really getting into the... I don't know. Yeah. Do they like... The technicals, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's funny in the category all cards, where you have to actually like touch every card in, at the end of every chapter, which there's seven of them. For chapter seven, we use Peach Warp so that it plays the end of chapter seven like 
um, cutscene. <laughs> so the game thinks we beat chapter seven, and then we go back into chapter seven, and it, and it puts us into the <laughs> chapter seven state, and then we beat that boss. <laughs> yup. It skips like half of chapter seven, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of funny how it works. We're just sneaking through the castle for for this peach cutscene. Yeah, this is the longest peach cut. Or I, well, I guess the cake is probably longer than this, isn't it? Yeah, but I guess in the this longest, category. Yeah, the longest peach cutscene in this category. Unfortunately, yeah. no way around it. Yeah, this game has like a lot of like spots in the game like this where it's like chill, and then there's places like in in chapter five where it's just like the back to back <laughs> glitches. So this happens in that, and then this, and then that. Yeah. And now we're walking. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like sometimes it's very demanding, especially if, like with the the LZS with the frame perfect jumps. Yep. Yeah, the pacing can be all over the place sometimes. Yeah. I, I personally I think it makes for a good uh, streaming speed run because then mm. you got time to like talk to chat and stuff definitely while you prepare what's coming up what, wait what's coming up next yeah prepare for yeah it's definitely nice to have downtime in some spots to talk to chat Or if you make a mistake, sometimes it gives you leeway to try and figure out what to do next. Oh yeah, that's definitely a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now we have beaten chapter six and there's an important badge that I need. I'm gonna go take this beanstalk just for this one badge. It's a super jump charge and I'm gonna use it I guess only really on, um, well, on one of the chapter eight bosses, I'll use it to charge up a lot of uh, damage and then use power bounce. So like those two badges combined are very powerful in this game. When you can charge up, uh, when you can charge up like the damage for your boots and then do a bunch of bounces on a boss, it's, it's very useful when we're really under leveled. Yeah, and it wasn't a mistake in reloading the room right there. It just puts this uh, this cloud on a better cycle, right? A little bit faster. Yeah, this bad bad super jump charge is a very good badge. In uh, some other categories, it gets a lot more extensive use since we're fighting more bosses. But mm -hmm. even still, it's still worth going out of our way to get. Um, even whenever it uh, it's gonna have a lot more limited use. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of if you look at like all bosses, for example, we just use power bounce like all the time. So <laughs> yeah, it's so important to that. Yeah, and another reason why it's uh, like really good is because whenever you're charging, you're not actually dealing damage to a boss, and a lot of the bosses in this game. Um, they, the more damage you deal to them, uh, the more varied and complicated their uh, attacks get. And so this is one way that we can just do all the damage in one turn and skip all the more difficult phases. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. A very empty Yoshi village. <laughs> <laughs> all the Yoshis that uh, did not get saved. <laughs> We're off to beat chapter seven <laughs> by going back to the volcano. Yep. <laughs> so now we're doing the same thing. Volcano is a very broken chapter. Yeah, back whenever I mentioned the new credits warp, this room that Random's in right now is the room where we'd actually do that. Yeah, so in the new for some context. The new any percent 
with um, Ace. It's really just to get to that room as fast as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Along with a few stuff that you need to uh, bring with you. But yeah, I guess you need like speedy things. spin and super boots. Uh, super boots, yeah. I love using hopping on Lackey to jump over the fire bar. <laughs> yeah, that's like the that's like the fastest I think that you can do that room. It's the same deal here, just kind of wedging himself into the corner, hitting this loading zone. Yeah, and if you're wondering, you might be wondering why we can't just, like, walk around up top. And uh, you can't see it, but there are some invisible walls that you can kind of just get trapped in. Oh, yeah, and also the laggy teleport right there. I don't know if I mentioned. It's uh, frame perfect. So Yeah. The fact that he got it first try last time, making it look uh, a lot easier than it is. So that Peach Chapter 7, uh, that's the last Peach Warp we will do. Unfortunately, we can't just do another Peach Warp and end up at the end of Chapter 8. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work that, that way. Yeah, that would soft lock. Mm, yeah. It, it will, like, th that screen right there, it'll just, yeah, it it, would it'll just, just keep you there forever. There forever. <laughs> because it, it's waiting to, like, load a, a Peach cutscene, but there is nothing. <laughs> After this, we are off to chapter 8, which is one of my favorite chapters. It's a lot of fun. There's also a lot of good glitches in there. End of the boss gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if if I was doing like PB attempts of this category, and I was doing all the riskiest strats, it's like you get to the, to the end, and then there's three bosses that have a ton of RNG. It's very risky, and you just need to hope that it works. It's it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I want to say these days, it's like a single digit percent chance to just finish, right? Yeah, it's like 8 or 9 percent to even uh, yeah. survive. It's, it's really, really risky. <laughs> yeah, it can be pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't have to be that way. I'm using safe strats, and we can still go pretty fast. True. Yeah, definitely do not be intimidated by that if you were, like, wanting to get into this game and the RNG scares you. Like, you don't yeah. have to do all the absolute fastest, riskiest things to go fast. Yeah. You can still get a very respectable time without it. So this yeah, is chapter seven. Spit us out. This is chapter seven. Yeah, we, <laughs> yep. we didn't enter chapter seven, but here we are leaving chapter seven. As though it was beaten. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, you don't have to get all the star spirits individually either. Uh, the game just kind of give, like if you beat chapter seven, the give, game gives you all seven star spirits. Which then lets you uh, get Star Beam properly. Which is going to be needed for the end here. Yeah, because normally in, in this game, you're supposed to save all the Star Spirits <laughs> to get to Chapter 8. <laughs> and all the Star Spirits, they they team together to help you get to Chapter to, to chapter 8, to Bowser's Castle. But we did not save very many. <laughs> you may notice we saved... Well, well, we sort of saved Mistar, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> we didn't fight a single chapter boss. But... <laughs> Get 
game's a little broken. So yeah, we were in this area in Prologue. This is a very cool area of the game as well. Now, we're going to use this to, to get to Bowser's Castle. Yeah, this area just checks, you know, if you, if you have beaten Chapter 7, then it just works. So that's the only trigger to make this happen. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not. I know people have suggested in the past, like, well, can you just, like, you know, find a way to levitate up into the sky and hit a loading zone? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. You have to actually beat Chapter 7. Yeah, if only. If only. Yeah, not that simple. It's kind of funny. For a long time, we have like jokingly been like, "Man, I wish there was some way to skip Bowser because of all the <laughs> all the RNG in this category." And in a way, well, now we have it with, with, the, with the credits warp with Ace. Yeah, that run. It, <laughs> it's probably once it's optimized, probably gonna be somewhere in the forty to forty-five, or maybe a bit longer range. Hmm. minutes right so it cuts off it cuts the length of this in, about in half yeah it's it's really something <laughs> something amazing to watch when you just uh crash the game and then reload that file and you are already at the end <laughs> of the credits <laughs> yep <laughs> really not even the credits themselves just pass them yeah Shoutouts to the kid who wants lots and lots of shroom cake, by the way. It's my spirit toad. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't saved in a while. I'll hit a save block at the start. Yeah, always good to be saved in a marathon setting. Yeah. So at the the start of Bowser's Castle here, there's a pretty big skip that we're gonna do um, to skip a whole part of the the basement we call it. So normally what you're supposed to do is go through here and, uh, you know, harden, go through, find the switch to harden the lava so that you can uh, go through and make it to the dark room and make your way all the way back up to this Bowser door that's going to put us into a trap. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'll let random get a bit closer before explaining it because it's pretty simple, but yeah, it's this guy here we call door one. Yep. <laughs> Got some sentient we... doors. In yeah. This castle. <laughs> Can we fall for the trap. get another life stream there yeah conveniently we have a couple life streams we can grab here which will be very useful so here this is not normally the way that you would go if you wanted to progress <laughs> it is not usually it's a long process to get back to that uh, door one we we're talking about there's a really easy skip coming up
Yeah, so there's a a badge. I mean, I guess you would come back here if you were trying to 100% the game. Um, yeah, true. Just for the badge. Um, but otherwise, yeah. So because the uh, the block is kind of skewed uh, toward the uh, relative to the camera, the collision gets handled kind of strangely. And so you can just use the ultra boots to do a tornado jump kind of into the corner and just get on top. And then use paracarry to fly across the top onto some collision that's really low. And that skips the entire basement section. Yep, just like that. It saves a ton of time. I actually encountered it. So I... Oh, whoops. <laughs> so there's <laughs> an one accidental encounter. encounter. RNG minute for later, that's all. <laughs> Lose like 10 seconds or so. Yeah, encounters are annoying, but usually not the end of the world. Yeah. Um, definitely should save. <laughs> so we're off to one of my favorite parts of the game as well, um, where we have the flood room. And there is a chance that you can soft lock in there. So that's why I felt it was important to save. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually not too much of an issue, but you know, it's an unrecoverable mm -hmm. if you do mess up. Yeah, so a few things are about to happen here. Uh, first, you're just going to do another lackey clip. Uh, you can kind of just wedge yourself into this corner. Wedge yourself into this corner, and it's a bit faster than uh, using sushi. Well, we don't have sushi, so we have to do that. <laughs> and now we're walking on water. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so, uh, Random is going to kind of clip back out of bounds, clip back in bounds, and for some reason this is going to let him kind of just, like, ignore the wall over at the top, I guess, and fall out of bounds. And then what Random's going to do is anytime you fall out of bounds, um, until the next time that you jump, you can do a Cooper Super Jump, which is what he just did right there. <laughs> Uh, basically, you have a whole bunch of height sword, and the next, if you use, if you do a shell toss with Cooper, it just shoots you straight up into the air, and you'll still like avoid collision. Um, but you can grab items like that, and so you can use that to skip like half of the uh, the what you would normally do in the flood room there. And then he just did some uh, maneuvering out of bounds to get back. So this is part of the um, the safe route. We're gonna real quick do this fight to help us level up one extra time. We used to um, do three of these fights. I need to level up um, EP. But now we only do one of those fights. And this is a glitch right here. That lets us yeah, this skip is cannonless. this room. Yeah, I was actually too high. Yeah, this is it's like, actually very precise. Yeah. All right. I'm used to coming. I'll just do it the way I normally do it. So if he does it right, he'll land actually out of bounds above the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to be in a very specific spot for it to work. Which he's trying to line up right now. And also okay, Laggy can get in the way. <laughs> I'm used to coming out from the left. Um, instead of like there we go. after the, the bullet fight. But there is cannonless. Yep. <laughs> we get to skip all the sense. cannons. Not stolen from... Mario nope. 64. <laughs> Very original trick name. <laughs> that we came up with on our own. So yeah, usually uh, with the old save route, we do three of those bullet fights. Um, now we do one of those, and we're going to do... Um, we're going to encounter this hammer bro to get a ton of XP. Yeah, also, fun fact, explosions, and I think fire, too, 
yeah. uh, do plus 10 damage to dry bones. So I don't know if you saw that that did 16 damage. <laughs> Which is kind of nutty. Yeah. To the dry bones. That's actually, as far as I know, that's the only, uh, a, like, bonus in the game that's just a straight damage increase and not like well no no it's not it's just the only one that usually it's like plus one or two i guess that one's just insane <laughs> yeah definitely unique i remember when i played the game casually i didn't think there was a way to really beat the dry bones because if you attack them normally they just kind of like they kind of die but then they come back but it's only the fire attacks that actually like actually kill them Yeah, I don't know if I knew that as a kid either. Yeah. So, after all the craziness of the Flood Room and Cannonless, then we have downtime yet again with um, with this, like, <laughs> quiz thing. Fortunately, these are, like, the answers to the, to the questions are predetermined. Yeah, it's always one one two one one. Yes. Actually, um, in the category all bosses, we purposely fail this quiz so that we can, so that we can <laughs> encounter the the unique anti guy unit. Ah, oh, the anti guys unit. My oh man, our favorite. Fight. I love all bosses, but that fight, man, it makes it tough for sure. It does make it tough. They each have 50 HP, and they yeah. all three of get, them like a cannon. Them. Yeah, <laughs> they do a lot of damage. I actually really liked this quiz as a kid because I, I don't know—it was just a lot to try and keep track of and try yeah. and figure out what was going on. But now that I know, it's always the same every time. <laughs> Which is nice as a speedrunner, you know, For sure. not having to uh, try and figure out what the answers are every run. Yeah, because we would have to find like a workaround for, you know, the, the game being in Japanese and not being able to read Japanese. Yeah, we'd, we'd probably have find... to look for... Yeah, we'd find a way, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah, TTYD runners manage it with uh, conditions in the Glitz Pit, so... Exactly, yeah. Okay, we're we're coming up to the all the bosses soon. Yeah, so uh, cannonless there was uh, actually the last glitch uh, that we'll see in the game. Oh, I mean, unless you count Luigi skip. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we'll get to that. Right, so just kind of going through the castle. Getting the last... I think it's the last key. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, it's actually really unfortunate. So the last uh, save block that Random went by, uh, that is the last save block uh, before the uh, the next the next boss fight. So it, it's kind of really annoying that it's so far away and you have to do stuff in between. Yeah. So this area, nice. like, if you go in the wrong spot, it'll, like, reset you back to the other room. You have to go in uh, the correct pattern. Like, up, down, down, up, down. Yeah, they, they tell you pretty clearly, you know, with the flames on the wall at the beginning, though. Yeah, I was thinking about it the other day, how I actually didn't realize that as a kid so i brute forced it <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah i don't think many people did that. Oh, no. i just kept trying it <laughs> until i figured it out i mean there's only so many combinations yeah <laughs> so i equipped hp plus it's peach before this fight just to be completely safe um this fight is like four duplicos and it's like there's a chance that they'll transform into your partner or not. And 
there's a 40% chance that they'll attack you. And if they all attack you, then you die. So I I put on HP plus so I can be completely safe. Yeah, transforming is definitely faster. Okay, so that was average. So if you get lucky and they all transform into Bombette, you can just kill them all immediately, and it saves a lot of time. But you have to get pretty lucky for that to happen. Yeah, it only happens, I want to, what is it, like 10% of the time or so? Yeah, around there. Whatever, 0.6 to the fourth power is. So I'm going to level up FP for this route. Do some things. And I'm good to go for the boss, Junior Troopa. So funny enough, we, we skip Junior Troopa in Prologue, and we skip all the other Junior Troopas, so this is the first time we, we actually see him. <laughs> He's really angry about it. He wants his screen time. <laughs> yeah, usually if you do this glitchless... How many times do we usually see him? There's a bunch of times. It's like five or six. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. <laughs> I have to think through each time, but. So he actually is a pretty tough boss, but we have a specific fight we're gonna do to to beat him. Yeah, and so this is where uh, Super Jump Charge comes in. It's just yeah. Be charging up and doing a little bit of damage with Fair Carry along the way. This is also where I'm using those wackas that I got. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I think... I think I only got one Whack-A-Bump. Or, uh, I think I'm short one Whack-A-Bump. And I'm not too sure what to do about that. Because usually we <laughs> use a whack right here. And so I'm not um, too sure what to do about that. Could maybe refresh? I don't yeah, know he he will do um, seven damage. Oh, smooch I mean... and then refresh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a fight? A little can... less than ideal. Is there a fight that uses one wacka usually? Uh, there I is. I think. I don't know what I we would do for... Oh, oh, but it, it uses a, a maple syrup instead. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I know I need to charge... Um, I shouldn't have shell-shotted there, because I need to charge one more time. I don't know, man. Oh, I, I did too much damage. <laughs> I'm going to have to reset. Oh, no. <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah, because I can't bounce on him now. Uh, he'll, he'll transform again if you can survive. Okay. I would try. I'm going to... Did I lose a life stream yet? Because I'm, I'm okay to lose one. <laughs> you did lose one, yeah. Okay, because I'm going to lose a second one now. Unless he heals? No, yeah, that's it. Okay. Unfortunate. All right. Okay, no wacka. <laughs> um, this is fine. Okay, okay, okay. Um... There isn't like oh you're gonna get the jam then. I I'll get the uh yeah oh wow encounter. I could get the <laughs> jam one. jelly. Yeah, I could get the jam. One. Yeah, normally it'll help, but there's also a, an ultra shroom to the left in the top room, but probably unnecessary. Yeah, you can just do the other fight. I could also get... I don't know if a Super Shroom would help, but there is one here. Mm. No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> the importance of the Whack-A-Bump. So the other thing, it, like, doesn't... Um, it doesn't do chill out, right? The one I'm thinking of still does, I think. Oh. But it's also been a while fight... since I've done it. I think the chill-up fight uses two, two whackers. Oh, no, 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 you're it right. Does, I, can just, yeah. I can just use the jam and jelly. I don't know. It's, it's tough to, to route things on the fly with this game. 
compared to having things like pre-planned. <laughs> yeah, especially with the limited resources that we have in Chapter 8. Also, I didn't mean for it to be prophetic when I said about how annoying it was that the save block was all the way back. True. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it. you could always do like timeout on Junior. I think it has like 50 oh, no. or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. How lenient, how lenient is this route on uh, life shrooms? Um, not super. I mean, we yeah. there's a chance you can save a life shroom on hallway Bowser, but that's only if he doesn't do fire. So usually you usually you lose a life shroom. Okay. Yeah, I really wish there was like a closer save block. <laughs> Actually, though. <laughs> Get another chance at a four transform, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if I can just get past Junior, I can. I can just find a way to not lose a life stream in the hallway. You could just time out. <laughs> yeah. No four transform. Else in the hall. Basically the same. I'll, I'll try to. Fun. I'll try to do like the same Junior fights, except instead of. Instead of the Wacka on the second one, I'll just use Jam and Jelly. Okay. You could go back and dupe a Life Shroom if you really needed to. Hmm. Just grab a bunch of random items. If you can't think of anything else. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Chill out uh, lowers his attack, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, by three. Here. Yeah, so this is the term we usually would use a second Wacka. There's also a badge in, in Prologue called Close Call that we use in, <laughs> in runs. Uh, there's a 30% chance that he'll miss. Yeah, it's a good badge, but only when it works. Okay, I think I bounce now. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that should still probably be fine. You, you would usually lose a life stream, right? Yeah, Maybe. I think we're fine. Yeah, I think you would still lose a life from with the normal fight if you got a four cap there, right? So yeah, this yeah. should be fine. 
Yeah, okay, we're actually perfectly fine. So that's good nice. news. So I'm gonna save. See, it was actually fine. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna heal by taking a nap. And oh god. And there's also a badge in here that, that I'm gonna use called Last Stand, where if Mario has less or like five HP or less, then attacks do half damage. We're gonna use that on on hallway Bowser here. This is like, uh, this hallway Bowser fight is like a... Yeah, and it rounds fight. down, so it's actually like a really good badge. Yeah, that's important when it does that. So like, fire normally does seven damage, I believe, right? Yeah. Blocked? Or blocked? Yeah, or blocked, either way. Yeah. So then if you, if you block it, it goes to half, which is three and a half. But then it uh, like it rounds down, so it only does three, so it cuts it to like even less than half. We got another important badge there, um, Power Rush, and that um, makes it so that if Mario's in danger, like five HP or less, he'll do double or not double, um, two <laughs> extra damage per attack, which is very useful. Yep, and uh, whenever you're jumping or power bouncing, that applies to each individual jump, so it really uh, adds up really quickly. Yeah, and both of those apply when you're in danger, which means you have 5 HP or less, so being at low HP is actually beneficial. And if random we're going for PB attempts, this is usually where runs go to die. <laughs> because yes. uh, you know, we go for a timeout on Hallway Bowser, which has a 30% chance to work. Uh, if it doesn't, you can go again uh, at a significant time penalty and lower RNG to win. But that is not what we'll be doing here. Because that is, you know, only has a very small percent to actually work. Yep. So yeah, a lot of runs die here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is like the bulk of the, the RNG, but fortunately, like I said with this route, just remove all that RNG and it's, and it's comfy. This is where Starbeam comes in. Gets rid of Bowser's shield. Uh, fun fact that I think a lot of people don't know, uh, in this uh, fight with Bowser, Star Shield does not make Bowser invincible. It just gives him plus four unpierceable defense. So if you have an attack that can do at least six damage, that will uh, actually break through. Yeah, that was something I didn't know when I played this casually. I'm going to lose a life from here. And then... Um, hallway Bowser can actually heal, and it depends on how much uh, HP Mario has and how much HP Bowser has. Um, so, good thing we're going to kill Bowser on this turn, because if we <laughs> didn't, he would heal. <laughs> nice. Good fight. Yeah, that's a good fight. Yep, and it's routed so that uh, random levels up right here. So you get a free heal, not the plus the you know the level up. Yeah, it's important to heal there for sure to like level up there. So there's only yeah, one we more didn't really... boss okay. to go. <laughs> yep, one more. And I don't think we really talked about it earlier, but uh, the experience routing uh, is very important in this game because you want to make sure that you level up at the right times. Uh, yeah. So that you can, you know, get free, uh, free heals and stuff like that. Yeah. And sometimes you actually want to be at low HP. Not as relevant in this category, but sometimes you specifically do not want to level up at certain times. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, very important to fight the particular enemies that you're supposed to, and no extras. Okay. So final Bowser. He's, he's pretty tough. He's got 99 um, HP, and he does a lot of damage per attack. 
and we're very underleveled, so we have to do yes. a very specific fight to make this work, um, so that there's not like any risk involved. Yeah, this is another one where if you're going for PB attempts, you're kind of just praying for the best. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So the in in uh, like if you're going with risky strats, uh, this is an area where you would be using super jump charge. Uh, but Bowser specifically is programmed to notice if you're charging, and if you are, he uh, becomes significantly more likely to use uh, his his shockwave, his wave attack with his uh, beam, and that removes any statuses that you've built up, and so uh, it makes it it, it makes it not unviable, but that's what makes the Bowser fight so much more risky, because we can't use um, that strategy as reliably. And so that's yeah. the, the purpose for doing a different fight here. Yeah, there's always a chance that he'll just hit you with the wave and take away all your charge, and then there's no way you can kill him. So this fight is, yeah, it's very specifically routed in a way so that he does not heal and so that we can kill him. Um, because Final Bowser can actually heal three times and I think he heals like 30 HP every time. Yeah. And so 30. we need him to not heal. And uh, I don't know if you want to talk about like the, basically like the formula they use to decide if he heals or not. Yeah, it's, I, I want to say it's if the percentage of health that Mario has left subtracted from the percentage of health that Bowser has left is is it 25 if it's greater yeah. than 25 yeah yeah if if that happens then Bowser has a 75 percent chance to heal yeah so basically it you, you don't ever want in to get it to get into a situation where he can heal uh, the only exceptions are he cannot heal on the first turn of phase two, and he cannot heal uh, on consecutive turns. But otherwise, um, if those conditions are true, conditions are true, he's probably going to heal. So you always want to have um, low health relative to Bowser, or at least not too much higher. And so, if we only had a max of like ten HP, and if we lose a life stream, then we have ten out of ten HP, which is a hundred percent. So he's more likely to heal then. So, but with this right now, I have twenty. So if I lose a life stream, it will put me at ten. So, I want to get Final Bowser to twenty six HP, and then, and then once I'm at a low health, then I'm gonna use Repel Gel to to like not to not die from his attacks. And that's the method we use. Yeah. Very specific fight to make this work. Yeah, repel gels are a turn of not attacking, but they make up for it by letting you stay at low HP for a long time. Yeah. So. The only other really viable way to do that is to use Bo, uh, another partner in this game, to use Out of Sight. But we mm -hmm. skip her chapter entirely in this category. <laughs> yeah. There's also a lot of ways that this fight can go because of how much like variation there is in, in Bowser's attacks and like when he can shield and all that. So we have it routed out of like if he does this on this turn, then do this. So I'm gonna be looking at the route closely. Yeah, I'm gonna let Ran random do his thing here. I don't know this route as well. <laughs> but here we go. Yeah, this route, I don't know it as well, but this fight is actually, like, re really interesting to watch. Just the, like, seemingly random way it kind of goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to not block this. Because I need to lose a life stream on a certain turn. <laughs> Random for random stuff. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, that's good. So yeah, I needed to lose Elytrum on this turn specifically, and uh, so that's why I didn't block that first attack. Because if you were to do Claw and then Butt Stomp, it wouldn't have uh, lowered my health enough. What am I doing now? Um, So usually he does Star Shield on this turn. Was it turn four? Oh, and changing it up a little. <laughs> we. So I have to it's react to that. <laughs> so yeah, I have to react to what he's doing there. <laughs> okay, good. Now he's probably going to wave at some point, and um, it's an attack that actually attacks your partner also. And I only want to block it with Paracarry. It's a it's a harder block, actually. Yeah, only a two-frame window. Or most blocks are three. Okay. Or lightning. <laughs> <laughs> that works. So on this turn, I'm going to use Shooting Star, um, specifically to put him at 26 HP. Oh, interesting. Good thing I blocked that. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard block. You always test that me. Is, yeah. That is not, that is not free. <laughs> But we're looking good. There's the wave. Nice. It was actually a three frame window since you yeah. had the repel on. The only reason it's normally a two frame window is because it overlaps with Mario Mario's uh, block window and Mario's takes priority. I don't know if he's going to die on this turn. I. I think he might be dead. Yeah, second repel is just for safety, right? Yeah. Wow, that was good. There we go. <laughs> All right. GG. <laughs> and now we've defeated Bowser and we get the Star Rod. Yeah, time isn't still uh, for another few minutes. Uh, got yeah. The, the epilogue and a little bit more movement. But... Yeah. But yeah, GG. A little bit of a, you know, routing issue with not having an extra wacka. But yeah. <laughs> figured it out. It's always a, a little bit intense doing that, the, the final boss. <laughs> you need to hit all the blocks and everything. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little little intense. Especially when you're doing yeah, TV not a attempts. Lot of, not, a, not a lot of room for error. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, definitely not much room for error. And and yeah, you're right. I got that extra repel gel just just in case anything went wrong. Oh, yeah, that's that's what it looks like uh, to beat Bowser as fast as possible using uh, <laughs> safe strats. And I will say, if anyone, uh, you know, is watching this and wanted to get into Paper Mario speedrunning, uh, I know, like, you saw Random do a lot of really complicated things, but uh, we also have, like, beginner routes and things that don't require you to be doing, like, frame-perfect jumps right off the bat and stuff. So we have, like, a really welcoming community uh, with a lot of good resources and people ready to answer questions. Um, so, yeah, for anyone who was interested in uh, doing that stuff and getting into this... Uh, just go to speedrun.com, go to uh, Paper Mario, you can join the Discord, got resources listed there and stuff, and yeah. Yeah, fortunately, uh, okay. a lot of the hardest glitches in this game are, like, optional, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it can be good for beginners as well. Yeah, this game is nice like that. Not doing the hardest stuff usually doesn't change the routes by too much. Right. 
Uh, yes, the stuff, everything that Random's done today is possible on uh, Nintendo Switch Online, yes. And every glitch in every run, I think. I don't know what wouldn't be possible. Well, I mean, I guess Ace. <laughs> with, uh, yeah, the that's true. That's like the only <laughs> that thing. one's unique. Yeah, that's like the only yeah. thing not doable on Switch. <laughs> for technical reasons that I don't fully understand. But. Same. <laughs> yeah, there's multiple like releases like um, you can play Paper Mario 64 on the, the Wii and on also on Wii U. Yep, every every and, version and... of this game is yeah. And now recently, just recently, it got released on the Switch. Yep, every version is very speedrunnable. If you can, yeah. I would recommend N64. Um, but yeah. I would... Yeah, if possible. Yeah, if possible. But otherwise, just whatever you have is definitely good. Even English. Like, uh, usually if people decide to take this game more seriously, they end up getting a Japanese copy. But if all you have is English... Like, I guess we didn't really call it out. I think really the only... Japanese exclusive glitch that you did was uh, Rapskip, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was the only one. We didn't call it out. but uh, And there's an English version of that one that's just like a little bit different. Yeah, it's like they patched Rapskip, but then there's like other ways of doing it that are just like yeah. a bit harder. <laughs> so that's fortunate. Yeah, not even that much harder. Yeah. Also, a fairly recent thing that's been added to like speedrunning this game is uh, the practice ROM, which is actually like developed yes. mainly by JCog. That's been <laughs> a really good tool for speedrunning. Um, yeah, it's just super helpful for practicing. Yeah, if you're familiar with uh, GZ or the Ocarina of Time practice ROM, it's based off the the same thing there. So. Um... You would be right at home if you're familiar with that at all. I went a really long time just uh, practicing this game on just a regular cartridge, and um, today I was doing. I went back to that, and it's like I'm so used to having the practice ROM and all the the warps that you can do and, and shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, what's I went nice. Honestly, it's just like. You don't need the, the practice ROM. You can still compete at a high level without it, but it definitely helps a lot. For sure. Also, last trick of the game coming up. True. <laughs> Luigi skip. <laughs> yeah, so Random is literally just going to hold down right here. If you listen, you can kind of hear the pipe. So it's just kind of like and two pipes out. A cutscene with, with Luigi. Yeah, it saves like, what, eight seconds, I think? Yeah, I think so. Why Probably can you glitch to do? do... <laughs> Why it's... is that possible? No idea. Just but a I... small oversight at yeah. the end of the game. I bet some of you that have beaten this game probably might have done it on accident. <laughs> Didn't even realize it. All right, time is coming up. It's uh, as soon as Peach puts her hands in the air. I'll let you say it. I think I have a slight delay. Okay, and time. Well, I said it pretty early, but time. <laughs> <laughs> GG. Thank you. That was fun. I, I always enjoy some good any percent. It's, it's how I started running this game, and I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, and Random himself, actually, I said, you know, start with that whatever version you have. Random started playing uh, on the English version and got actually... Yeah. pretty good at it yeah i, I think you still have the that. fastest english version or yeah. fastest english uh, any percent time yeah yeah i ran on english for for quite a while That's until i finally went out and got a, a japanese cartridge but yeah that was that was fun yeah i had a good time <laughs> thank you everyone for the ggs So thank you guys yeah, that's all so I had. much. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Thanks for having us. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for uh, putting this together and just for uh, uh, coming on and, and uh, doing this for us. It's been amazing. Uh, I love the run and I'm sure everyone else did. So yeah, just wanted to, just wanted to give you uh, some shout outs there. And uh, if you guys had any shout outs uh, as well uh, before we throw it a break, um, yeah, go ahead. Any shout outs? Um, I mean, shout outs to the Paper Mario community for, for being awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and thank you for, thank you to Jacob for commentating and thank you to TGS for, for having me on for this. It was a great time. Absolutely guys. Thank you guys so much once again. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have a uh, DKR 100%. That's Diddy Kong Racing 100% with Trident Tail and Sweener Dog. So if you're interested in that, please don't go away and, uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you.